This is the Panda Revo Quick Change High Flow Hot End for the Bamboo Lab P and X series printers. It's a collaboration between Big Tree Tech and E3D and is a drop in replacement for the stock bamboo hot end. It makes nozzle changes super easy, allowing you to switch back and forth between bigger and smaller nozzles as the application requires. But that's not all. It also boasts an impressive max flow rate of 40 cubic millimeters per second, nearly double that of the stock nozzle. Or at least that's what they claim. Can it actually achieve that? And do we even need that much flow? I went down a rabbit hole in my testing of this hot end and discovered that we don't need that much flow after all. In fact, anything more than 15 cubic millimeters per second has diminishing returns. And above 25, there's little to no benefit with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I'll get to all of that in a minute, but first, let's get this thing installed. The Panda Revo comes with the heater cartridge and thermistor pre-installed. This is in contrast to the E3D Bamboo Obsidian hot end, which requires you to repurpose the stock ones. So right away, the installation process will be considerably easier. I'll start by removing the existing hot end, which is attached with two screws and three plugs. We'll need to repurpose the fan, so I'll remove that next. The wires need to be folded over on themselves and routed through a cable slot before installing the fan. We'll then install the new hot end by connecting the three wires and replacing the two screws. With that complete, we can heat it up to make sure everything is working properly. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. In addition to supporting my work and the work of many other creators, they can also support you in your projects. Whether it's PCB manufacturing, sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, or even 3D printing, PCBWay can augment your capabilities to open up new avenues for creation. I appreciate how I can defer to them for things that I just don't have the time, skills, or equipment for. Whether it's printing peak, molding polycarbonate, or machining aluminum, PCBWay has you covered. Consider checking them out for your next project. The Panda Revo has a cylindrical ceramic heater with 60 watts of heating power, an increase of 12 watts over the stock heater. Typically when making a significant change such as this, we'd want to PID tune the hot end to ensure the temperature response is critically damped and doesn't oscillate around the set point. Unfortunately, given the closed nature of the bamboo firmware, we're unable to do so. As the hot end gets up to temperature, you can see that it overshoots the set point, then fluctuates around it before settling. The heating time is actually marginally longer than the stock heater, which I found somewhat surprising. We have the same NTC 100K thermistor in the Revo as we did in the stock hot end, but the relative positioning of the heater, thermistor, and nozzle are different. This can lead to a discrepancy in the temperature readings between the two hot ends. 250 on the stock hot end might be 260 on the Revo, or 240. In order to calibrate, I printed a temperature tower on each. When comparing the results, I found that the Revo prints approximately 10 degrees hotter. 280 on the Revo is really like 290, and 200 is like 210. When I line up the towers with the 10 degree offset, the adjacent tiers look similar. I was able to confirm this finding by measuring the tip of each nozzle with an external thermistor. The Revo measured approximately 10 degrees higher. We can't do anything in firmware to correct for this, so we'll just have to adjust our filament profiles accordingly. All right, let's see how this thing flows. Can we really get 40 cubic millimeters per second? I used the racetrack test built into Orca Slicer and tested a range of 15 to 40 cubic millimeters per second. As a baseline, I printed it first on the stock hot end with a result of around 19. The nozzle that comes with the Panda Revo is the 0.4 millimeter high flow, which incorporates Bontex patent pending core heating technology, or CHT. This helps melt filament faster permitting higher volumetric flow rates, and therefore faster printing. So let's see how it does. Based on the marketing claims, we'd expect it to complete this entire tower successfully, all the way up to 40 cubic millimeters per second. But it didn't. The extruder started to skip at merely half of that, 21 cubic millimeters per second. I tested a few different combinations of materials and temperatures with similar results. The new hot end was only marginally better than the stock one in terms of flow. When I reached out to Big Tree Tech for clarification, they told me that they achieved this result with eSun PLA Plus printing at 260 degrees Celsius. Filament viscosity decreases with increasing temperature, so the hotter you print, the better it will flow. But it should go without saying that you can't just increase the temperature indefinitely without consequences. But for argument's sake, let's give it a try. At 260 degrees, which is really like 270, the tower completed without any major under extrusion. However, as we get closer to the top, the inner edges started to curl in, which seems to indicate insufficient cooling. And at the corners, we have gaps, which I believe is because the nozzle pressure can't be maintained. So can it print at 40 cubic millimeters per second? Sort of. But do we even need this much flow? Actually, no. 
I'll tell you a little later on why for practical purposes, any more than about 25 cubic millimeters per second has no tangible benefit. But for now, let's look at what I think is the more enticing feature of this upgrade, the ability to quickly and easily interchange nozzles. When attempting to print very fine details, a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle can struggle. With the Panda Revo, we can simply swap in a 0.25 millimeter nozzle and get much better results. In all my years of 3D printing, I've never actually printed with a nozzle smaller than 0.4, so I was amazed at just how well I was able to print the very small text on this model. Bamboo Studio has a built-in profile for a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, but not a 0.25, but I just used it anyway and didn't encounter any issues. I then switched to a larger 0.8 nozzle and experimented with that. The benefit of a larger nozzle is that we can print things faster and make them stronger with thicker extrusions. When I was done playing around, I switched back to 0.4 for my normal printing. It's worth noting that the nozzle that the Panda Revo is supplied with is brass, so you'll lose the ability to print abrasive materials, unless you replace it with a wear-resistant obsidian nozzle. At $129 for the base kit, and another $50 per nozzle, or $60 for obsidian, this is not an inexpensive upgrade. This becomes even more apparent when you compare it to the cost of a complete hot end assembly from Bamboo Lab, at just $35 a piece. A full set of hot ends ranging from 0.2 to 0.8 would cost you $140, versus $279 for the Panda Revo with three additional nozzles. So the question you need to ask yourself is, how often will I be switching nozzles? And how much of an inconvenience is it to change out the whole hot end instead? Personally, I think the additional cost to outfit my printer with a Revo is worth it. I won't think twice about slicing for a larger or smaller nozzle, given how easy they are to change. The same wouldn't be true if I had to change the whole hot end. It doesn't take that much longer, but it's enough that I'd avoid doing it. Then there's the fact that the nozzles are interchangeable with other printers from different brands that also use the Revo hot end. I can have one set of nozzles to share between all of these printers. As an added benefit, Revo nozzles are available in a wider range of sizes, all the way up to 1.4 millimeters and down to 0.15 millimeters. This offers much more flexibility than the 0.2 to 0.8 range offered by Bamboo. All right. Now let's loop back to the flow testing. I alluded to the fact that flow rates higher than 25 cubic millimeters per second are inconsequential. This sounds surprising, but the data speaks for itself. I studied two representative models, a small 3D Benchy and a large desk organizer. For each model, I sliced it with a different max flow rate, ranging from 5 to 40 cubic millimeters per second. This graph shows the print time versus flow rate. For the Benchy, sliced at a fine setting, a standard setting, and a draft setting. The print time plateaus quickest at 0.16 mm layer height, and slowest at 0.28 mm layer height, indicating that there's a greater demand for flow with the thicker layers, which makes sense. All three hit the minimum print time at a max flow of 15 cubic millimeters per second. Increasing the max flow any further has no effect on print time, so clearly flow is not the limiting factor. If we disabled the slow print down for better layer cooling setting, we see print time reduction all the way up to 20 cubic millimeters per second of flow but no further reduction from that point forward. So initially the limiting factor was cooling, but now the limiting factor is either speed or acceleration, or both. Now let's take a look at a larger model, which will provide more distance on the straight line segments to accelerate to higher print speeds, therefore requiring more flow. For the desk organizer, the print time reduces up to 25 cubic millimeters per second before plateauing. Disabling the cooling slowdown has no effect, so clearly we're not limited by cooling. What these results show us is that with the built-in print profiles for the Bamboo X1C, there is no benefit to raising the max flow above approximately 25, which, by the way, is the only setting change we're advised to make when installing this upgrade. But what if we raise the speed? For the Benchy, with no cooling slowdown and all print speeds increased to 500 millimeters per second, we do see a print time reduction all the way up to 40 cubic millimeters per second of flow, but it's minimal. The print time is only one minute faster than when the max flow is set to 25. For the desk organizer, we see a more significant 30 minute print time reduction when increasing the max flow from 25 to 40. In both cases, the max flow of 40 cubic millimeters per second could be better utilized if the acceleration limit could also be increased. If we were to increase it to 20,000 from the default 10,000, we'd save two minutes of print time on the Benchy, with a max flow of 40 as compared to a max flow of 25. On the desk organizer, we'd save 38 minutes. But in reality, the speeds and accelerations are capped for a reason, any higher than 10,000 millimeters per second squared, and will start to hit other physical limits. With input shaping enabled, excessively high accelerations will lead to a loss of sharpness in the details of our prints. And with higher print speeds come more print artifacts, 
and an inability to cool the material sufficiently between layers, particularly on smaller models. So in practice, 25 cubic millimeters per second is the most flow we need with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle to realize the full potential of the bamboo printers. We could take advantage of higher flow hotends to push them a bit further by increasing print speeds or accelerations, but print quality will likely start to suffer in other ways. So even though the Panda Revo can't achieve the advertised flow of 40 cubic millimeters per second with the included nozzle, it doesn't have a significant impact on its performance. This realization, combined with the utility of the quick change nozzles, is enough to make me pick this hot end over the other higher flow solutions on the market. So let me know what you think. Does this finding surprise you? And what do you think of the Panda Revo? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. If you want something else to watch, check out my review of the Panda Touch. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing. Thank you.